Oh, I'm already unmuted. <laughs> uh, all right, so we'll start in a little bit. Just getting, uh, still getting set up. Uh, today, I'm gonna be making some small creatures, just like it says in the title. So, uh, yeah, we'll just wait a couple of more minutes, and then we'll get right to it. It seems like my mic is working, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna, I'm trying-ish a couple of different things today, so we'll see how it goes. But let's go ahead and go on to drawing. Haha. <laughs> okay, cool. So, <laughs> I, I've been working on this little bear since a couple hours back, but... Um, okay, so as you can see here, I put current music. There might not be any music playing right now, but let me test this out. Instead of just playing my usual, um, you know, that royalty-free music that the intro and outro has on repeat, I'm going to try out playing some, uh, some not other royalty-free music. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of, uh, kind of in a, in a, in a weird funk right now. Uh, I think it's because I'm trying some new things, but basically I want to play some music that is royalty free, but from YouTube, but also some stuff that is thematically appropriate. So, um, I'm going to be playing, I saw this on my, uh, recommended, but it was relaxing Digimon world lo-fi music. And I freaking love Digimon world for the PlayStation one. So we're going to try it out. So, um, I know there's probably ways where you can just automatically put like what the current music is, but for now, we're gonna go with the uh, the manual thing where I just type it up here. But for the next hour or so, let's enjoy some Digimon World Lo-Fi music. Hopefully that's going through right now. And I'm sure once Beans is back from Get Me Some Matcha, um, he'll let me know if the music is a little bit much. But uh, here's what's gonna be going on today. As you can see, I got this little bear. This is from me uh, practicing. Um, no, you know what? Rewind, rewind, rewind. Um, for the past couple of streams, I've been doing this thing where I study uh, artists that I like and try to kind of look into their styles, look into how they do things like lines, rendering, sketches, as much as you know I can um, look into. Sorry, just got a, a message. Um, yeah. Just uh, stuff that I, I kind of can study and just try to kind of like replicate it or, you know, uh, see what I can do with it. Uh, and it just so happens that a lot of the artists that I follow happen to be Digimon artists. Just because I also like Digimon. <laughs> um, but for the past couple streams, we've been studying Garmi, who has a very, uh, very cool style for one. Uh, and their rendering is pretty straightforward. It's just kind of flat colors. But when they do... Um, uh, kind of more involved works. It's a bit more of a painterly style and that's kind of what I was trying to get the hang of with this little bear here. Uh, it's not exactly like Garmi's style. The, the name of the artist is Garmi, by the way. Actually, let me go ahead and get a... Da -da -da. These are the artists. These are the artists that I'm drawing some inspiration from that I'm going to be studying over the next couple of streams. 
Um, so I studied Garmy for a little bit. I, I really liked the experience even though sometimes I did struggle. Um, but I think next up for today's stream, we're going to be studying Sinobali. Sino Bali. <laughs> um, they're also another Digimon artist, and um, I keep saying I say this in all of my uh, kind of study streams, but I'm not gonna be showing their art on stream just because I don't have any permission to. Um, but you can go ahead, and I'm gonna be writing their names down anyway. In fact, let's go ahead and get started on that. Let me put this layer folder away. Today, let us study the art of. Da -da -da -da. Sino Bali. I'm gonna have to adjust the size. There we go, Sino Bali. Check out their art on Twitter or any other social media they have. I have references up on my computer, so I'm gonna be referencing it. But they have this really cool, um, very cute style, very round style. They mostly draw Digimon. I think they draw other things. Let me check out their Twitter really quick. Yeah, it seems like for the most part they they draw Digimon, because uh, some of the artists I follow also like draw other things other than Digimon. Like uh, I think Thirteen Sentinels is one of them. Um, but I'm gonna be studying Sinobali style today, uh, and let's see what we can go with. They have this really cool picture where it's I don't know if it's them or their avatar, but with a whole bunch of Digimon. So uh, it's very like rounded, you know. So. What I'm gonna do is uh, let me let me go ahead and just pick a random Digimon. Oh, what do you know? I just googled random Digimon generator and there is in fact one. So, ooh, Togemon. Yeah, you know what? Let's do Togemon. And you know what? Let me go to my BRB to get a really quick reference for Togemon. I'm pretty sure I can show that on stream. Alright, just getting a quick Togemon reference. a reference for Togemon and uh, for those people that are let's see just so that people know what kind of what's going on is I'm studying So let's go ahead and try this out. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw Togemon kind of straightforwardly and then I'm going to make adjustments according to what I noticed from Sinobali's style. So uh, let's see, Togemon is a cactus. Ooh, I'm the <laughs> this is the first time I'm listening to this uh, playlist. So some of the voice... Um, yeah, some of the, the sound bites that play might take me by surprise. She is egg. <laughs> She's like very egg shaped. Maybe even suspiciously so. A little tuft of hair up here reminds me of a certain orc VTuber. Let's say which one. We got our cactuar face over here. God, with no context. Her design is a little creepy, to, to be quite honest. Even though I love her, and even though in the 
1998, 1999 anime. She's great. But, you know, if you didn't grow up watching Digimon and you just see, like, this... This cactus. <laughs> this cactus with a face. But the eyes are- the, the eyes and the mouth are just kind of hollow. Arguably, it is kind of creepy, right? <laughs> okay, let's do the arms. Dreamer. Oh, let me just make a general shape here. Damn, she ready to square up though. And make this its own layer. Proportions seem a little off. We can fix that. Let's see. I'm really glad she has these kind of easy glove hands. I'm not terrible at hands, but there are times where, like, I think just by their nature, hands are kind of hard to draw. Um, so sometimes it does <laughs> almost look AI generated. Alright, let me uh, BRB for a sec. Beans the Bear got me some matcha, but um, I noticed at the first sip that there was no sugar in it, and I'm definitely one of those, like, <laughs> I'm definitely one of those, like, I need the sugar. I have, like, the, the palate of, like, a nine-year-old. Yeah, the, okay, so <laughs> looking away and looking back, the proportions are definitely off, so let me, I wonder if I could just kind of cheat it a little bit, distort. A little bit more bottom heavy. Now her uh, her hands look like sock and boppers in the 90s. Sock and boppers, more fun than a pillow fight. Oh, you know what? It should be... I think the, the glove is fine-ish. It's the arm.
Well, actually, yeah, the glove is kind of close, so... Let me mute for a second. Got the matcha with the sugar. Thank you, Beans the Bear. <laughs> yeah, so I'm listening to um, lo-fi Digimon world music. <laughs> uh, you know, because I'm drawn from Digimon as well. And I, I do love Digimon world. I would like to play it, maybe even on stream someday. If I can figure out like a, a PS1 emulator. Which isn't too hard, I've definitely played PS1 emulators before in the past, but I think it's also a matter of streaming it. Saw so Yoshi and thought it was a Mario? Yoshi? Yoshi! Oh, the name of the, uh, the artist. I love Yoshi noises. Okay, so now the face needs to be a little bit up. Maybe even a little bit smaller like that. There you go. These Yoshi noises sound so good. I think they're sound bites, really? Cool. Yeah. My favorite is when Yoshi's about to fall off the Super Smash Brothers stage and he goes like To those just tuning in, I'm studying a Digimon artist named Sinobali. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just drawing Togemon how I would normally, but also I think um, once I draw it out, I'll make some adjustments according to some things that I noticed from uh, Sinobali's art style. By the way, I don't have any commissions to work on uh, at the moment, unless I get one like, you know, right now, right the second, <laughs> but... Um, I don't have any plans to work on commissions, of course, until I until I get some. So um, for today, it's pretty much just going to be the style study, um, and then maybe for the latter half, I don't know. If, I I want to shoot to go for two hours today, uh, ending at six thirty, so Beans and I can go to the gym. Um, but it might end sooner, depending on how things go. But I'm down to take requests near the end, maybe after the first hour if I. Uh, I'm kind of tired of working on the style study. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, I will do some requests from the chat. But it just, just depends. Depends on how I'm feeling. Just needs a little bit more of a curve to it. There you go. Oh, so this line extends. Ooh, you got some ideas ready, Beans the Bear? Cool, cool. Keep them, keep them secret, keep them safe until the time comes. Or you could just share them now, either way is fine. Up to you, but I will be working on this Togemon in the meantime. Ooh, this music's spooky. Just in time for spooky season. Yeah, it's been so long since I've played um, Digimon World 1 that... I'm trying to remember, like, was there, like, a spooky stage? <laughs> Which there probably was. It was probably, like, you know, the dark, um, Digimon or whatever. Not whatever, but you know what I mean.
I kind of like how the um, so I'm drawing these lines to show like the um, I'm copying them, but the the lines that kind of show the texture, like the cactus truck texture, it kind of turns into paws here, like little little animal paws at the feet, like right here. Kind of cute. I would like to like just study how like Digimon designs are in general. If her hair doesn't really like jut out from the front, it's more so from the back, so I should probably do that. This spine's a little bit more obvious. I want you to draw two silly and murphy bears. One is open high where the other is Mr. Peaky Blinders. And it says inside me there are two silly and murphys. Either it says that <laughs> not the silly and murphy bear. I'll try my best. I don't know how I can get. Excuse me. I shouldn't burp on stream. But, um, a handle on uh, those cold, cold eyes of his. <laughs> Better yet, I should do like. Um, what is it? Jonathan Crane, Cillian Murphy. How about that? <laughs> Scarecrow, Cillian Murphy. <laughs> If you don't accept me at my Peaky, my Mr. Peaky Blinders, you don't deserve me at my Oppenheimer. Does he have an accent in uh, Oppenheimer? Like I keep saying Oppenheimer, like like as if I'm speaking Korean and saying Oppa, which I don't. That's a, a language I do not know. Maybe one day I'll learn at least Hangul, since I like scripts and stuff. You know, uh, I don't remember TBH, all the Peaky Blinders I've watched have deleted the other accent, like his, his uh, actual accent. I think he is Irish, isn't he? Oh, you just. God, I hope the, any Irish people in the chat don't like come for me. He is totally Irish. Okay. Okay, so here is my Togemon. Let's do a study of Cinnabali's uh, style and see kind of what they emphasize and what, uh, what, what changes I can make too. Um, once again, I'm not going to be showing any of the Oppaheimer is the Korean bootleg. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oppaheimer. <laughs> the first movie I saw him was uh, called The Wind That Shakes the, the Wind That Shakes the Bali, and it's like an Irish IRA movie. Or Irish movie? I don't remember if it was good. Hey, Mega Bronson. Yeah, <laughs> Oppenheimer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm studying an artist called Sina Bali at the moment. They draw Digimon art, and I just drew this fighting cactus. Um, so I'm gonna make adjustments. Right away, I see that Sina Bali does like big eyes, like huge eyes. Like if the the Digimon, you know, like has eyes that look like like this. They're like that big. <laughs> so. And uh, since Togemon doesn't have the usual, like, kind of kawaii eyes, and oh my god, you know what I noticed? The little spines? Oh, it's not showing up on here. Let me take that out. I want you guys to see something. Like, you see, like, the spines here, right? These two spines make, like, an angry face. <laughs> like, she's just so mad. I'll do that. Forgot to actually like draw the spines. So I'll draw that and then I'll get back to the study. But this is reminding me of uh, if any of you did watch Digimon growing up, how like um, her her English voice and her Japanese voice are a bit different because like in uh, in the English she's. Kind of like a bit huskier and it's like time for some needle spray but in the japanese it's like a lot cuter and a lot more high pitched and her move is called chicka chicka boom boom i think she has oh she does have whiskers thank you for pointing that out she has whiskers but she has like a much higher pitched voice and like uh instead of being like needle spray she's like chicka chicka boom boom and it's like so cute 
Which make her seem like a little less intimidating than this like kind of scary cactuar looking like soulless eyes looking thing. Like look at that. Okay, so let's uh, make the eyes super big and maybe kawaii as as kawaii as you can make. Oops, I accidentally did that on the wrong layer. Ah, you know what? Let's just merge. Put the reference here at the bottom. Merge my layers. What was I talking about? Um, her eyes. I'll make them nice and big, as quiet as I can make them. Um, I remember in to those who don't know who watched the original Digimon series back in the '90s, there was a follow-up that they made in like the 2010s. It's called Digimon Try, and there's a scene where now you know what a little bit less. There's a scene where all of the champion Digimon are like mind controlled by the villain and they get like uh, creepy glowing eyes, right? And then Togemon here, she like, she doesn't really have eyes. They just make it so that light is just like emanating from like the holes where the eyes would be and it was like the creepiest thing. <laughs> she looks like freaked out. Yeah, it kind of was. It kind of was. Try itself, I don't know how I really feel about it. I do like that they continued the the universe. And you got to see your, your childhood favorites all grown up. Kind of. <laughs> like, grown up as you can be in high school. Um, but I don't know, it, it just felt... I'm trying to find the words, like... Like, it definitely wasn't perfect. But I I do understand some of the decisions that were made. <laughs> God, the eyes are so huge now. <laughs> Maybe her, I think I might also have to make um, kind of her proportions just a little bit smaller too. So how about I levitate these this feet? Upwards. Make her a little bit more round too. Round gal. You know what, I'll, for now I'm just gonna erase like some of the details so I can focus more on the shape. Oh, their music reminds you of Crash Bandicoot. It does remind me. It is like the same era. This is a PlayStation game. And I remember from this game there were definitely like different uh, regions that you can explore. Because uh, I think the, you know, when you first enter, you get like a hub town. And your mission is to kind of like revive the hub town from being a little like kind of podunk place. And as you progress along the game, um... You encounter like Digimon that you fight, but when you beat them, or sometimes you just find them, but like typically you fight a Digimon and then they're like, Where are you from? What the heck? Um, and then you lead them to your like hub world, the Digimon like little village, and they become like fixtures of the village. So like um, you defeat some guy and suddenly he's like, You know what? I suddenly feel like selling computer parts to you. So he goes to the town and becomes like the computer part salesman, or like, Well, now I'm a save button. Now I'm gonna sell you, um, you know, the buffs that you need for your Digimon. I love when the writing explains shit like that, yeah. <laughs> Where it's just like, oh, this town has like nothing. It doesn't even have like a save feature. I sure wish I could defeat someone and, uh, you know, get a very convenient save feature. Or some kind of like, um, you know, not fast pass, what's the word, but just like a, a quick way to get to other areas. I like that when in Metal Gear they say snake. 
use the action use the action button to climb up the ladder. I love that because like yeah, sometimes games will just like instead of being like oh access your suitcase to to um or you like get out a typewriter to save your progress instead it's like press X or press R two to do this. I don't who needs immersion? Am I right, fellers? <laughs> So I can either make the mouth really big or really small. I'm, I kind of want to see what it looks like. Small. If that emphasizes the eyes a little bit more. Yeah, I kind of like that. I feel like it's a little bit cuter. So first thing I'm noticing from Cenobali's style is big eyes. Big eyes. And they're not super detailed, but they, they do the job of, like, you know, making something seem a little bit cuter. I'm looking at, like, an artwork where she draws, um, Black Tailmon or Gatomon for my fellow US watchers. And the eye is, like, like your usual Digimon style. They're huge. Like, the pupils are huge. Little pupil. And then, like, a big ol', like eye whites or highlight right here. But of course it doesn't count for Togemon at the moment because uh, she has no eyes. But I am going to experiment with the shape actually now that I think about it. Make it a little bit less like of a perfect circle. Maybe something more eggy shaped. I'm also more partial to that shape myself. I never even realized that. <laughs> what if you add a layer where it's googly eyes and the glasses that have a fake nose? Oh my god. <laughs> Try to think of like... Yeah, googly eyes. <laughs> this is less of a study and more of a shit post now, but for now let's keep it like that. We can and should study shit posts. It's how we evolve as humans. I mean you're not wrong. See how I remember the the nose. I'm not great at drawing noses. That looks like a dick and balls, but there's your nose. The little mustache. <laughs> I mean, yeah, bears. Yeah, that's how we evolve as bears from, like, you know, the, uh, our ancestor, the cave bear. She's in disguise! She's in disguise. She's incognito. Those do indeed look like little dick and balls. <laughs> Is it wrong, though? Is it so wrong? No, I didn't mean to merge it! <laughs> There we go, okay. You know, let's make that a different color. Thank God for undo. <laughs> there we go, so that we know she's in disguise. The dick has been merged. No! <laughs> no merging, no merging. No merging into this lane. Okay, so let's continue the study for the hair. I'm looking at how Sinobali does hair. It's very, like, very curvy very like like if the hair is normally like this she kind of makes it like like that just very curvy a little bit more volume let's do that with the hair maybe even make the hair a little bit bigger too i'm still getting notifications from uber eats even though i like turned that off turn that shit off already I just deleted it until I need it again. True. 
I usually don't like order Uber Eats unless I have the place to myself. Um, but even then, sometimes we we have good food at home. It's like it's like our parentals and guardians say we got food at home. Today we had like um, really good crab sushi and uh, shrimp. I think it was like butter butter garlic fried. It was really good. <laughs> Let me take off the disguise for a sec. Okay, it looks a little too like too much luscious locks on her head. Let's either let's see what happens when we make it small. Or maybe just less. Less overall. Let's take away these points. Just leave like three. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we got the hair, we got the big ol' eyes. Let's see if the- I wonder if the boxing gloves need some, um, like, adjustment. Interesting, so I'm looking at a reference. When she draws Black Tailmon or Black Automon, the, the hands are very big, but it's almost, like, adorably so, because she's a cat. But then for other Digimon, I think she makes them smaller. What it seems like is that Sinobali looks for uh, kind of defining traits to really exaggerate. It's not necessarily like she always makes the eyes big or she always makes the paws or the arms big. It's like she, she figures out what are kind of the defining features of that Digimon and just exaggerates them. So let, let's try that out. So uh, for Togemon, um, we got the big eyes, we got the fluffy hair. I feel like then we should make the boxing gloves a little bit bigger. This music is very cute. What is this? Curling theme? Oh, there were mini games in Digimon World. I think there were Digi- Like, yeah, I want to say there were mini games. I feel like curling was one of them. You know, like that Olympic sport where you like- Is, is that the one where you like just pass like this heavy ass puck, but then like two other guys with like brooms just sweep the ice so that it like <laughs> passes through like quicker? I feel like that was maybe also a mini game in Digimon World. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's an Olympic sport in the Winter Olympics. It's legit. <laughs> I thought they were just curling dumbbells. Like really hard. <laughs> like just really hard. <laughs> I I believe that's what it is, right? Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, chat. I remember I, I was into the Olympic Games very briefly back in the early um, the early fandom days for me. Back when I was into stuff like uh, do I say it? Natalia and Homestuck. <laughs> um, yeah, back when I was into that and I was in the con scene. Um, actually, I think it was because of like Natalia that like I was a little bit more interested in stuff like you know international politics because <laughs> i remember actually being interested in uh like the world cup and being like yeah usa beat uk because the uk like fumbled that one ball and it went straight into the goal and that happened like during i want to say like anime expo 2010 or something and then because of that i ended up watching the winter olympics as well i think that's when uh people first oh that uh the meme of the jamaican bobsled team which i don't want to just call them a meme because they worked really hard <laughs> but, but yeah i think back then because it was such a um what's it called not automatopoeia um what, what is it when it's like reversed like jumbo shrimp what is that again there's like a word for like when it it seemingly contradicts itself Anyway, it seemed like that. Just trying to make the... Oh, that's kind of cute! That's kind of cute. She's got those big old, big old arms now. The music got very intense. Oh, 
oxymoron yes an oxymoron so like jamaican bobsled team sounded like an oxymoron i think that's why it became like a meme at first but they actually like did work really hard to get where they are so it's like it's almost like a very wholesome story all right so we got to Gimon with like kind of these adjusted um proportions i wonder if i should also do something with the feet or leave it as is let me let me test it out Let's see what it looks like if I make it smaller... Oh, she looks baby. Uh, if I make it bigger... No, I think it's fine as is, actually. Alright, so... Let me make sure this is its own layer. This is the sketch. Oh, no, it's not. Sketch. Let's see if we can also... Oh yeah, don't forget the disguise. And then in my notes. So Sinobali does big eyes. This. So big eyes, kind of fluffier hair. But also she uh, looks for kind of like defining features in her Digimon. And then exaggerates it. I'm sorry, I keep on saying she. I don't know what their actual pronouns are, so I'm gonna keep on saying they. Uh, but yeah, so... Looks for divining features and exaggerates it. That's what I got so far. Let me take this out, actually. Cool runnings, yeah, I've never seen it, but I've heard good things. This song kind of slaps. It's very, like, spooky. Let me see what the... Ice Sanctuary. This is where you find all the ice Digimon. <laughs> I kind of like how this turned out, this is so cute. Oh, every time you th when I said she, I thought you meant the Digimon. Okay, yeah, I was referring to the artist, uh, Sinobali. I don't know their actual pronouns, so maybe I should look it up. I should do my due diligence. Uh, looks like they don't have their pronouns listed, but that's okay. I also thought Babinka meant the Digimon. No, that's my name! <laughs> A cactus. <laughs> uh, technically, actually, actually, Digimon are genderless, according to that one episode with Renamon, who is very obviously a female and caused a lot of, uh, you know, furry awakenings in a lot of people. Not me, but. <laughs> and Shawoma! No, they're all genderless. They're all genderless. It's canon, it's canon, it's canon. And Jim, that's not, no, that's not the name. Nope. <laughs> nope, that is not their name. <laughs> I know what you mean, but nope. <laughs> America, explain. Like, that's the energy I'm getting from that. <laughs> Why is this Kansas and this is not our Kansas? America, explain. I'm just saying what I heard from the series. Digimon are technically genderless. Even if they if they present, you know, with certain features, it's, it's very much like someone can be non-binary but present femininely or masculinely or however they want. So, you know, you know, you know, you know. Anyway, let's get back to the to our work over here. Um, the way that Cenobali renders... Is, is my, for one, it's not painterly, which I don't hate pa painterly, it's just very hard for me. <laughs> uh, so I'm kind of happy. Um, the way that they render looks like it's line line art, and then they just kind of go into some clean colors and uh, rendering, like shading and highlights. <laughs> Beans brings up good points. What I'm saying, though, is that they can, they can be genderless, but just present like they do have a gender. Or abide by the binary. But I'm gonna get into, let's see, let's 
let's do some line work. I do like doing line work with this brush in particular because it has a very, um, it reminds me of pixel art. It's not pixel art, but like if you look at the border, I'll show you what I mean. See, it's, it's called syrup, this brush. If I make it really big, and you zoom in, you can see that the border is very like, I don't know, pixelated in a, in a good way. But yeah, let's go ahead and do some line work. Actually, let me see how thick, thick, how thick the lines are. Okay, okay. I'm seeing some things, I'm seeing some things. So it could be thicker. It could be thickums. Ooh, I like that. That feels very satisfying. <laughs> Oh no, they don't have overlap. So what I'm noticing is how I typically line is like that and like that. But what I'm noticing from Cenobali is that they do something like this. Here we go. look satisfying I'm glad trying to master that that one stroke <laughs> what you'll see from a lot of artists though is actually I don't like how the feet came out now, I know they're supposed to look like paws but they look a little bit too much like paws where it's almost like they're just supposed to you know like like it's just supposed to be implied or implode there we go I think what I was gonna say is that sometimes with a lot of digital art, you'll see, you'll see this where it's like, ah, undo, 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 undo. <laughs> like, like sometimes just it's just like one curve that will just like beat your ass, take your money, put you in like an ice bath with your liver missing. Ah, too thick. I know there's no such thing, but sometimes. this song what is this song so it sounds very jaunty and joyous toy town is it toy town this game am i not a true gamer this is reminding me of the um there was an episode in the original digimon 1999 anime they do go to toy town you get to see all the little baby digimon being born and then uh, their protector is a little rookie Digimon called Elecmon. And the reason I bring it up is because in the dub he has the same voice as the ghost in Mob Psycho 100, the green one. What was his name again? It was like, like Giggle or something? Or... What was his name? You know what? I don't like how it did. Is 
it an episode and it was snowing? Are you referring to uh, Digimon? Because the one where it was snowing, that's the one where, um... Dimple. Yeah, Dimple is the... N so, Dimple has the same voice actor in the dub as Elecmon when they visit Toy Town. Um, that's where I was going with this. But the episode where it's snowing, it's, um... <laughs> I know the first series, like, the back of my hand, because I've rewatched it, like, at least five times. So, um, the Digimon... The Digidestin, the Chosen Children, they all get separated uh, because of Devimon, the first, I guess, like, boss Digimon of the series. They all get separated, and then Tai and Matt, also known as Yamato, uh, end up on, like, a snowy island. Or snowy part of <laughs> File Island. All of the names in the Digimon universe are, like, you know, based off computer stuff. So there's File Island, there's the Continent of Server stuff that I kind of overlooked as a kid because that just wasn't my ish back then. And now look at me, a freaking nerd. Nah, but I don't I don't know hardware stuff. <laughs> that was always like my dad's neck of the woods. Let's see how this looks without the sketch. Okay, okay. Yeah, go ahead, ask me anything about the first series <laughs> of Digimon, and uh, there's a chance I'll be able to like recount it pretty decently. Unless it's something like super pedantic, like name every Digimon in the first series. Coromon. Oh fuck. <laughs> Coromon, Tsunamon, uh, uh... Agumon, Gabumon, Greymon, Garurumon, Palmon, Piomon. What is this factorial town? <laughs> it's saying Newt Newt. <laughs> the song saying Newt Newt. Now that I said that, it stopped. Newt Newt. Was the movie canon? Excellent question, Mega Bronson. <laughs> so the Digimon movie was actually three movies in one. It was actually like three 30-minute movies in one, and the first part where it's Tai and Kari as like babies essentially was actually like premiered. Like you could consider it the pilot episode. It, I think it premiered before the actual anime. It was like supposed to be the introduction to like Digimon as like an animated franchise. Um so yeah, like, I, I think it, yeah, it premiered before the actual anime did. Um, and then the, the series actually premiered in 1999, 1998, I keep forgetting. Uh, and then there was the, the second half, or second part of the movie. I'm trying to remember what happens. Yeah, the second part of the movie is where it's the, the computer virus with Diaboromon. That, that came out after the series. That's supposed to be like kind of a continuation. Um, and it's the movie itself is called Our Our War Our War Game. I'll type it in the chat. <laughs> Our War Game, um, also known as like the Children's War Game. Like I think the Japanese um, version of the title was like either like Bokura no War Game or like the Children's War Game. Um, so that that was its own movie. Those two were their own movies. Um, and the the original like 30 minutes the first part of it where they're where they're babies was just called digimon adventure um so those two went into the american digimon the movie and then the last part was um it started in like the 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 sequel uh digimon zero two where it's like if you remember there's like davis and yoli and cody and ken the digimon emperor so that's digimon o2 and so the movie takes place after that and um that is the one where we meet like an American kid named Willis and blah blah blah. So all three of those sections were all completely separate movies, but the the dub actually like rewrote it in a way where they were all kind of connected. Like, um, I think they more explicitly connected the second and third parts, but they would say something like um, Diabormon was a virus, which technically yeah, Diabormon is like a virus, but 
um, the way that they connected the last two halves of the movie is that they said that Dio Boromon, like, he's defeated at the end of the second part. Um, but the narration in the dub is like, oh, but like, um, you, you can fact check me on this, but I think they, they implied that like, oh, but he still lives on as a virus. And then he infects the who would become the villain in the third part of the movie. <laughs> this is, I know this is starting to sound confusing, but like the plot of like the third part is that there's this American kid named Willis and he's looking for his dig- like he has twin Digimon. And one of them essentially like went berserk uh, and became, I think, something called Wen- Wendigomon, Wendigomon. Um, and in the in the dub, it's explained like, oh, he was infected with a virus. Whereas in the ja- original Japanese version, since it wasn't related to Diabormon at all, it's just that like, oh, he just went berserk. So, you know, it's I have to admit, it's not bad writing to to like connect those two movies. Because, like, it does kind of give an explanation, like, why did this Digimon just suddenly go berserk? In the American version, it's because, like, oh, that Digimon that you defeated, the Diaboromon, was actually, like, the culprit. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember any of this. I remember kids in America. <laughs> Very true, though. That, the, the OST, the soundtrack of that movie is banger. Like, I love the soundtrack. Freaking Kids in America, Fatboy Slim, and the, <laughs> and the internet, dude, Fatboy Slim. Yeah, Fatboy Slim was in that movie. Um, it's the, I think it's the, is it the Right Here, Right Now song? And then there's, um, oh, the Shrek song. Um, <laughs> and it just keeps coming and they, and they don't stop coming and they don't stop. Yeah, All Stars in that movie too. The OST is, is banger. <laughs> like, it really is. Uh, there was another, I'm trying to remember it, but there was a song, right? Uh, so in the second part of the movie, Dio Bormon is this virus that infects, like, everything in the real world, in, like, our world. And, uh, what ends up happening is, um, I think he sets off a code to launch a missile straight into Japan. Like, like, that is literally what happens in the movie. Like, he sets off a code and the Digidestin have to, like, find a way to, like, plug into the internet, send their Digimon to the internet, and defeat Dio Bormon before the missile strikes Japan. Um, which they do. They, a spoiler alert, sorry for a 20 year old movie, but like, uh, they succeed. But the OST does this really cool thing. I forget which song it was, but like, um, there's a line in the song that's playing that says, like, and it all comes crashing down. And right at that moment, the missile hits Japan, but it's been rendered inert. It doesn't explode and it just crashes down. And it's like, wow, that's like so perfect of a music choice. <laughs> I've been wanting to rewatch the first season and the movie, but I feel like I don't have the time. It's something that you can put in the background, in my opinion. I'm very biased, of course, because I love- that's like my comfort series. But like, I think it's something you can definitely put in the background. I have the, uh, they recently remastered it too. I have the DVD for it. Which, you know, like, DVD, what the fuck? But, um, I don't know what streaming, if it is streaming on anywhere? Um, but if you ever want to borrow the DVD, they remastered it. So it has both the dub and the the subtitled version. Um, they're also gonna remaster the movie. Oh, that was big news! That was big news. Um, they're remastering the the Digimon the the Digimon movie, the thing that we're talking about. Um, but they they also got a whole bunch of the old voice actors, with exception to those that unfortunately passed away. Oh, it's on Hulu. Yeah, I think it might be on Hulu. Check it out. Yeah, uh, but I think that one is not remastered. So that one ha- kind of has like funky. Um, I think like aspect ratio and the quality is not as good, but if it's there, it's there. I I fully fully recommend it, especially the dub because like I know the dubs, especially for old anime, get shit on because they're not 100% accurate. This is very true, and sometimes they censor it unnecessarily. But the Digimon dub was something else, in my humble opinion. Like I love the Digimon dub because like they throw in like all these unnecessary jokes that were, in my opinion, bangers. Um. Yeah, I don't know. All in all, I think it's a good time. And the voice actors, like, they, I want to say they put their whole digibussy into it. You know? So, I, I would say check it out. But um, going back to the movie, they're remastering it. They contacted a whole bunch of the old um, voice actors to, uh, to redub it, essentially. And I think they might even release it so that it's, uh, you know, so that it's actually the three separate original movies. 
Um, the exception with the voice actors is the voices for Joe and Mimi, because unfortunately those voice actors passed away already. Um, so sad. I really do like their voices too. The voice actress for Mimi voiced uh, Cody in the second second uh, season. Fun fact. Um, but yeah, so I am super hyped for whenever that comes out, that new Digimon movie dub comes out. Ooh, what's this song? Beetleland. Nice. Very cool. Alright, so I got very sidetracked. Not sidetracked, I really like that conversation. I really like talking about Digimon. Um, as to what I'm doing now, I finished the line work. Now I'm putting in the flat colors. But I might need to do some adjustments because that green is very vivid. Something like that. The saturation. Actually, I should study what kind of colors Cinnabali uses. Are they more saturated? Oh, they have two different rendering styles. One is very painterly. Another one is a little bit more um, flat cut, like cell shaded. I think I'll just go with cell shaded for today. Yeah, let's put in... Yeah, let's just put in some flat colors. And let's study Cinnabali's rendering style. I can see you doing Digimon video essays as a bear. I feel like that niche is like already kind of taken though. Like there's some really good stream, uh, not streamers. Well, I don't know if they stream too, but like there's some pretty good uh, YouTubers that already talk about Digimon content. Like Karn uh, EX is one of them. They're really good. Um, oh my god, I'm blanking on the other ones. There's some really really good Digimon like YouTubers. I used to follow them on Twitter. Oh, I'm so oh god, <laughs> they were so good. Lost in Translation one, I think is one. <laughs> Those sound like people. You're a bear. There's an untapped bear market. Very true. There's also a bear Digimon. You know, maybe I could. Uh, my my avatar can be Bearmon or Kumamon, depending on the translation. Yo, this slaps. What is this song? Early game and major battle. Yeah, it does sound like it. I don't know, maybe I do. I do, as you can see, love talking about Digimon. So that could be a niche I explore because, you know, I do want to draw lots of cute things and Digimon is just full of cute things. And then some of the artists that we are studying with this like exercise, they have a way. Oh God, that is super vibrant. Um, I'll fix it after I do this. Um, they have a way- I think Cenobali is one of them, like, when you- um, what am I trying to say here? They have a way of getting, like, the complex Digimon designs and making them, uh, cuter. Cuter and simpler as well. Cenobali, I believe, is one of them. Because, uh, when you go into, like, Digimon that are, like, uh, the younger- So it's, it's like, in-training is, is one of the levels. Like, Koromon and Tsunamon are in training, and then Rookie is like their, uh, for most of them, it's like their default level. Uh, and those are usually like very cutesy. Um, uh, but once you get into like the, the older levels, like Champion, Ultimate, and Mega, they get very complicated. Super complicated. So like, for artists that are able to like, kind of get the, um, kind of the essence of that, simplify it, but still have the, like, the spirit of it. I admire that very much, and I think that's that's definitely one of the points of this exercise is to kind of study their art style. Let's see, uh, how, how can I do something like that? And this song is so good. Okay, these are all separate layers. The uh, eye and mouth holes are straight up black. But I don't want to do like, you know, zero, 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 zero black, like pure black. I'm gonna do just a slightly, slightly like off. I guess if off white exists, does off black exist? Okay. Uh, duh. And then I will also do kind of the, uh, this part should be a little bit darker. Dang, this, this sounds like almost 90s, like this kind of music. 
Like, it kind of really reminds me of, like, Mighty Morphin, in a way. Like, if you ever watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, remember uh, the two bullies, whenever they, like, enter the scene, there's, like, this, like, almost, like, circus music that plays. Like, -ni 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 like that kind of thing. That wasn't the exact thing. <laughs> This sounds sick too. What is this? A Mount Infinity and the final. Oh, final battle. Wasn't Godomon like one level Digivolution higher than everyone? Yes, yes it was. So Godomon uh, was uh, a champion. Okay, so the levels are. <laughs> Here's my Digimon spiel. My Digimon lesson for the day, out of many, um, is that like they hatch from an egg and then they are fresh in the English version, fresh and then in training. And then Rookie, which is kind of like the default for most of them. And then Champion, uh, which is Gatomon's default. And then after that, it's Ultimate and Mega. In the Japanese version, it follows... So that kind of like... Fo the English version follows kind of like a fighter like cycle. Like you're a Rookie and then you're a Champion. The uh, Japanese version, because it's kind of based off like a Tamagotchi. Like it's almost like the stages of like a, a person or life. So it's like... It's like fresh? No, wait. It's baby. The first level is baby one. The second level is baby two. Rookie is called child. Champion is adult. Um, ultimate is called perfect. Because, you know, us humans always... <laughs> after adulthood is perfection. Am I right? Uh, and then... Or is it mega? Oh, okay. Um, ultimate in English. Japanese is perfect. Mega in English is ultimate in Japanese, so that's where it gets kind of confusing, but uh, th that's kind of the life cycle. But yeah, to answer your question, Mega Bronson, Gatamon's like default was um, champion. Lore-wise, lore-wise it's because she was like abused by that one vampire Digimon, Myotismon, so she became stronger and that just became her default. I remember them as baby at the start. Yeah, at the start they're like... Uh, uh, in, in the first episode of Digimon, they're in training, or uh, Baby 2, essentially. So that's that's where you get, like, they don't have any bodies, they're just heads, like Koromon. I'll do a quick, quick sketch just because I want to, now that we're in this conversation. We got Koromon, we got the little, the little ears. And Tsunomon was Gabumon's in training. He had like the big horn. I'm like doing this from memory. <laughs> I love those little shits. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> yeah, so that's in training. Uh, but they have a level below that, which is fresh. So before, before Koromon looks like that, it's like a Koromon is a Botamon, and they're just a little like, they're just like a little shit. Like, like, like that. And I think the only time you see, like, these forms is, um, when they, like, get to, like, the mega form, and then you know how, like, you know, it's different from Pokemon, where they don't stay in that form, they, um, they de-digivolve, where they go to, like, an earlier stage. This, this was, a uh, Sunomon's. It was, like, a little, little red thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you d you don't see these forms that often. It's because like when they go to like a super mega form, they de digivolve. They use up so much energy, they go back to like an earlier stage. So like most often they're this form. Like I think the first time Agumon becomes a uh, uh, Metal Greymon, he digivolves back to being Koromon. I don't know if you ever see Botamon and uh, the, the other one, Punomon. They lose all their power, but I thought they returned. Yeah, you know what? You're right. They do return to baby too, cause like, um, I, I think I'm trying to think. I think it's very rare that you see their baby one forms. Like the exception I want to say is Tentamon, the bug Digimon, in that one episode where uh, I think Izzy essentially becomes like brainwashed, and then Tentamon becomes so sad that he like <laughs> digivolves all the way back to like his baby form. Which looks like, uh, like a little puddle. Like, he, he's just like a little puddle with like a... How do you say it in English? Um, the little tipon, like the little uh, pacifier. He's got like bubbles on him. 
He's just like a little slime, and that's that's Pabumon. <laughs> Tentamon legit just becomes so sad that he just de digivolves back to this. And then after that, he like um, uh, Izzy snaps out of it, and then he becomes uh, Motimon, which is also like a little slime dude, big ol' arms. Looks like this, and then becomes Tentamon, and then goes back into his like bug line. Um, and then the only other time you see the baby one forms is uh, there's like a flashback where um, the Digimon talk about like, oh yeah, we were born out of our eggs and we were waiting for you, Digi Destin, and we were waiting to be your partners, and it's like this really cute moment. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you can see, <laughs> as you can see, I'm obsessed. I love Digimon. So let me go back to just in some colors. And then let's see how Cenobali does rendering. So it's very cell shaded, but there are there is a little bit of um, what's it called uh, gradients or soft brush work. So let's let's do that. Let me put the notes away. Let me put the reference up here. Let me get a shading color diagonal and two shift to blue. Clipping mask, new layer, clipping mask. So ensure that it doesn't go outside of the, the green, so do that. DG Dustin was almost your, your PlayStation username? That's sick. Maybe I should have some kind of like handle that references Digimon in a way, but, but nah, I gotta I gotta be Babinka. Digi Babinka, maybe. <laughs> maybe in the future. Maybe. <laughs> some shading so under the gloves under the gloves here that's sick mega bronson digi dustin Let's see there's some shading here there's also a little teensy bit of shading here like where her um like the cactus parts are i gotta remember to draw the spines too it's a little too much Oh, it changed to... Uh oh wait, no, stop. It changed to another playlist, but I don't know if that's stream safe, so... Let me go to another playlist. I have a couple bookmarked. I think the next one is, like, just relaxing Digimon lo-fi music. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let me change the credit. Oh, credit is a little hidden. But... So this music is by... Can you change this? Um, Sad Godomon on YouTube. There you go. Actually, I want to hear Butterfly, the Japanese opening. Bobinka Baramon! Oh man, that's an idea. <laughs> what if I make a Digimon line that's just like me? <laughs> like what if I what if what if I just do a little cheeky? So like my uh, my baby form is just like a bear head with like a little little tipoon. Have the eyebrows though. There you go. That's that's my that's my baby form. <laughs> what would it what would it be like? Because there's already a Bearmon in Digimon. <laughs> now you know what I have to have. I need the earrings too. Just like the little earrings. Not even a nose, because you know there's. <laughs> oh, how about like baby mom? There you go. That's me as a as a wee baby. <laughs> what if I change my lore to just be like, oh yeah, I'm a Digimon. <laughs> Always have been. I'll leave Bibimon right there. Oopsie, wrong brush. You 
even though I didn't grow up with this song, I, I watched, I just watched Digimon so much that, like, it, it hits the nostalgia, the nostalgia spots. Now, maybe I shouldn't do soft shading on the, like, inner lines. I think I'm just gonna stick to outside. Okay, and then it looks like... Hmm... <laughs> it's a reveal! My lore reveal, my lore reveal. I was a Digimon the whole time. Don't sue me, Ben. Wait, who? Who does Digimon? Bandai? Just gotta throw on some armor and guns and the scene changes. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, it's like the one from the, the third season where uh, it's Terrymon and when he Digivolves, he gets pants. And Gururumon too! Gururumon, when he Digivolves, he just gets- he like goes on uh, two legs and wears pants. <laughs> my Digivolution should just be like, I just put on pants. And have a gun. <laughs> yeah, let's do some cell shading. Let's see what happens if I just use the same color. Okay, wrong brush. Let's go back to syrup. Sinobali seems to keep their rendering pretty simple. Like, there isn't, like, too many lines or whatnot. Because I'm very tempted to, to do, do this, where, like, each of these lines has, like, shading on it. But it seems like the heap there is just very big and very, like, simple. Digimon survive. Okay, so we got some stuff from, uh, these are all from di different, uh, <laughs> whoever, whoever, like, book, uh, what is it, like, put the, the different song names on this playlist just gave up after a while. Oh, it says repeat. Okay. Okay, okay. So this one, this playlist is an hour long, so. Cool, so once we hear the end of this playlist, I think that's pretty much when I'll call it. I know, more like 6.30, so like in 40 minutes or so? I can't freaking do math. Yeah, 40 minutes, 40 minutes, 40 minutes. Digimon Survive. No, I haven't. I haven't played Digimon Survive. I do want to. I do want to play Digimon Survive. 
I think the I think uh, did it come out at a time where other games were coming out? Because that might be the main reason why I just never did. It's also because I think it was like a tactic, one of those like tactics like games, which like a part of me was like I want to say I'm bad at them, but I don't think I ever like really played very many tactics games. Thank you, Beans the Bear. Glad you like it. Put some shading here, too. This is from the second season. I think this is the opening. My favorite things about the Japanese openings for Digimon is that they you know what the American version did this too but they would change they would change when like new shit happened in the series like in the oh my god I remember that was so hype in the American version of the opening when um spoiler for the 90s series when it's revealed that Kari is the eighth child she gets added to the opening the the Digimon digital monsters she was like added to it and then I think you see all of the Digimon's like ultimate forms too. Um, but the Japanese version also did that. Um, they did the gray fresh. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, the Japanese version also did that. Where? Or did they just do a completely different opening? I forget. But that's that's like one of my favorite like anime things is like changing the opening to to be like yeah this shit happened. You should know about it. Oh, this is the third season. Biggest streamer. Do, 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 do. The third season is also one of my... Oh, hey, Latino Deep! Now this is pod racing. <laughs> no, this is Digimon. <laughs> but hey, how you doing, Latino Deep? We're just drawing some Digimon. I'm doing a style study of uh, one of my favorite Digimon artists, Sina Bali. We're also listening to Digimon music, and I'm also rambling about Digimon. So it's a very Digimon-centric stream. How you doing? Yeah, the third season. Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. Is the, the third season of Digimon was well, very dark. I've never seen Digimon as a kid because I thought they ripped off Pokemon, so I protested. Yo, so I completely understand where you're coming from. Because that's the reason why I never checked out Lord of the Rings. And I feel like that's one of those things that I would get like you know, beaten up for saying, but when I was a kid, I thought Lord of the Rings was a ripoff of Harry Potter, which, like, in hindsight, is the stupidest thing that you could think. <laughs> That's way worse. Yeah, because, like, Lord of the Rings and, and, like, Tolkien, like, predate Harry Potter by so, so much. And plus, like, they're completely different things, but, you know, as a kid, you don't know that, right? <laughs> so... So, like, I went through, like, a good chunk of my life thinking that, and then when I got older, I was like, wait, these are completely different, like, things. Like, it's not even, like, technically even the right genre. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're a wizard, Frodo. <laughs> God. Which, um, I have to admit this, I've never finished The Lord of the Rings. I remember, um, I watched the first two films with some friends back when I was, like, in my 20s. But we tried to marathon all the movies all in one night, and I think we just knocked out before the we even got to the end of the second one. So I do want to, 
I do want to watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit, but um, I just haven't had the opportunity. So, you know, that's something I'd be interested in. Yeah, single session... <laughs> I'm never doing that. I never want to do that ever again. <laughs> Like, even for a really good series, like, uh, or a really good, you know, franchise movie series like Lord of the Rings, like, definitely do not recommend that. Okay, let me do the shading for the gloves. What is this song? Oh, Digimon Frontier, that's the fourth season. Spread them out and watch the extended versions. I'd be down. I'd be down to watch that. Especially because, like, I've definitely been more into, like, fan fantasy as a genre lately. Not even lately. I feel like since my early 20s, I've been, like, getting more and more into, like, fantasy genre. So, yeah, I, I would be down. I would be down to watch them. Two shipments. I don't know if I like purple for shading. This is Butterfly again. Oh no, this is Digimon Frontier. The other one was also Digimon Tamers. Okay. Oh yeah, this is Digimon Frontier. This is the season where they, <laughs> they don't have Digimon partners. They turn into the Digimon. Admittedly, it's my, like, least favorite, but I still like it. Like, saying anything is my least favorite Digimon series is, like... Like, I... <laughs> I feel like it isn't saying much, because, like, I like all of them. Or all the ones I've watched, at least. Also, Latino Deep, if you ever do want to watch Digimon, I offered this to, to uh, Mega Bronson as well. I have a DVD, no, Blu ray. I keep saying DVD, not DVD. I have a Blu ray for the first season, which is definitely one of my favorites. To this day, I feel like, I know this sounds like a lot, but I feel like it's probably one of the best demonstrations of like character arcs in anime. Because they, they do character arcs really well, because it's done through their like Digimon partners. It's like, how do you know that this character has achieved courage or just not being a dick? Oh, it's because their Digimon evolved. Right, correctly. Because <laughs> there is an episode, spoiler alert, where like, um, one of the characters forces their Digimon to Digivolve and it ends up really badly. <gasps> did I do this on, oh, whatever. I did it on the same, I did it on the same layer. It's okay, it's okay. I'm sorry, Mega Bronson, I meant Blu-ray. I meant Blu-ray. I have the Blu-ray. <laughs> Either of you can can um borrow it if you want, but it is also on Hulu. It's on Hulu too. Now you know what? Go back. Back to the past Samurai Jack. I'm going to put some. I'm gonna shade still. with a soft brush. Clipping mask. Oh, this is Braveheart. Or the song is called Braveheart. It's um, the theme when they did you ball. What the fuck? Why does it... Why, Why did it have that sound bite? What the hell was that? I feel like that was a sound bite from the anime, like a really, probably a really sad part, but what the fuck was that? 
Uh, I think next paycheck I want to update. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. I think um, I think Bean shared your idea with me. Um, if that's okay. But but yeah, I like the idea. I'm down to to do it. The trash can idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Japan tie in the middle. I freaking sure hope not. Digimon is a kids anime. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like okay. My theory is that it's a uh, it's from the anime. Um, I feel like it's maybe even the scene where um, because because Latino Dave didn't see the series, I won't say the spoiler full out. But when uh, a certain character dies, <laughs> and another character is like, no. Is one of those songs that has like the random English in it for whatever reason. And that one is Show Me Your Brave Heart. Like it's very um what's the one they did in South Park? Let's fighting love. Something 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 protect my balls. Okay, I'm losing track of the fact that I'm supposed to be looking at Cena Bali's work as inspiration. What did you clip? <laughs> oh, is it the, the noise? Nah, I'll, I'll listen to that after. <laughs> Sad noises, maybe. You're gonna drop it in the Discord? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you know what? The yeah, the shading is a little too intense. I'm, let's see what happens if I reduce the opacity a little. Same with the gloves. Yeah, 
God's biggest dreamer. Okay, so that's the shading done. Let me look at Cinnabali's style again. There are some parts, it kind of varies, but there are some parts where she blends. I keep saying she, but there are some parts where they blend. So let me put a little bit of blending. Oh, actually that looks pretty good. Ah, this is Digimon World. We were just listening to this uh, playlist. File City. You know, I, I do like the, the blending. Let's do a little bit more blending here. A little bit here. They don't really use a lot of highlight. Their highlights seem to be like very soft, or like, I'll show y'all what I mean. They use a soft brush. it's too vibrant but i think it's also too saturated there we go there we go because when i color usually my shading is very saturated so let me let's tone it down a notch which is a pretty good technique i'm learning a lot from doing this study because when when you tone down the saturation of the shading it does kind of bring out a little bit more of the natural color in Let's see, is there anything else that Cinnabali does that... Oh, interesting. In, uh, when they do eyes, sometimes they don't always have, like, line art. Instead of hiding the line art, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to do a clipping mask. Let me get the color of the eyes, and then I'm just gonna... So, because Togemon's eyes are very simplistic, I'm pretty much just covering that like inner line. Yeah, I actually like that. Did they do this effect? Oh, they do, where they kind of like tone down the, the line on the inside. Yeah, you know what? Let me try that out. Let me try that out. So, especially because Togemon has lines on the inside of her body. Actually, on the same layer. Do something like that. Or maybe slightly Yeah, there we go. Something like that. Oh, 
what I'm getting from this is that, like, they have very bold lines, you know, Bali does? Very bold lines, but they do a couple of uh, techniques to kind of, like, tone it down, so it's not just, like, it's almost like your eye, how do I say this? How do I say this? Like, your eye doesn't get too stressed out. <laughs> We're looking at like the amount of line the amount of bold lines it gives your eyes a rest That made such a big difference. Yeah, I'm noticing it too. Yeah, it's like not so, <laughs> I guess, overwhelming. Uh, and actually with this same color, what I'm gonna do, I didn't forget about the spines. I'm gonna put in the spines. <laughs> I feel like I should, so, okay, slightly darker. So I can still do the one that looks like eyebrows. <laughs> I'm gonna stylize it just so like it really looks like eyebrows. Little whiskers too. And add a couple. Hey, yeah, you know what? I'll keep it that color too. realize she has whiskers that's such a cute detail She, uh, they do use highlights occasionally. It's very, very sparingly, but they do do it. So I kind of want to... Maybe just the gloves. Maybe just the gloves will have highlights. of like lines like that. like it's fading out a little ah interesting okay but they don't seem to do much for the the hair so maybe i shouldn't do much for the hair and then in their shading too let me go back down here They do this sometimes, where there's like, kind of random lines. Ah, 
actually I don't like it. <laughs> or at least like I'm not doing it justice the way that Xenobali does. Because they also use it very sparingly like they restore the There we go, okay. Now we're schmoovin'. See if there's anything else that I'm missing from the style. Alright, let's see. Alright, so there's like 10 minutes left on the clock since uh, Beans and I are gonna go to the gym at 6:30. So I think one last thing that I will do is I'll try to put an outline behind the outline. I'll show you what I mean by that. That layer. Oopsie poodle. There we go. There's definitely like a smoother, better way to put like another outline on here that I specifically looked into when I was um, looking into making stickers. But um, I don't know, you have to kind of fool around with the layers a little bit so I don't quite want to do that at the moment. Plus I kind of like this process. Even though I am a like made some I made some pretty cool like designs if I do say so myself. Um but I think just thinking about like the cost of like manufacturing plus like shipping them out or not even the cost, just like the process of it kind of like intimidated me. So I never ended up like doing anything with that. But you know, maybe maybe in the near future people like my designs enough. I'll think about it. You like the the line difference in this process, like the calligraphy brush type of thing. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's I, I have to like kind of credit where credit's due. It's um, depending on the kind of brush you do, there's this thing called stabilization where it kind of like corrects, you know, your lines for you in a way. Like what I just did right now. Um, for example, compare that to do, 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 just the standard airbrush. Now you know this one has stabilization. I feel like there's a brush here that doesn't. Probably this one. I don't know. I can't really prove the point that well, but like stabilization essentially like corrects your your lines for you, makes it look a little less jagged, a little bit more like curvy. So that's part of it, especially for calligraphy brushes. But like I understand what you mean by the the texture too. Kind of like reminds uh, one of calligraphy. 
so yeah i think uh, i'm gonna go ahead and call this piece done i i really like how it came out uh, and i learned a little bit from using um let me erase my baby form over here baby one let me go back to my notes take out the reference picture so cinemal uses big eyes fluffy hair um looks for defining future features and exaggerates let me In terms of how they um, render things, it's like cell shading. Why is it like this? Oh, because I'm using airbrush. There you go. Cell shading. Slightly muted uh, colors for the the shading. Sometimes they uh, erase lines. Or, no, not really a race lines. Line color is, um, I guess like tinted. I don't know if that's the right word. Only on the inside. What I mean by that is like the outer uh, outline is always like black uh, with, with white at, at the end, but sometimes the inside is like green. Um, what else are the highlights? They use highlights very sparingly, or at least like the hard highlights, like the ones on the gloves. What else? What else? That was something I'm forgetting here. Oh, they they make use of for rendering, soft shading as well. Highlight layers. And finally, like a white outline um, over everything. Everything. All right, I think those are my notes for. Uh, there's probably more. There's probably a lot that I overlook too with their style. Uh, they have a really good style, so check them out. Their name is Sino Bali on Twitter. I don't know if they have any other social media. Uh, this was my study of it. I might post this on on Twitter on the X. Um, and as a reminder, I do have uh, I have like an art Twitter under my other name. I'm not gonna share that right now. Uh, but I also am on Twitter under Bibinko Bear. I might post this there and on my art Twitter. Uh, and I have, I tried to upload all my VODs on YouTube as well, but I forgot the last one. So I'm going to get to work on that once we get back from the gym. But otherwise, I think that's pretty much it for today's stream. Thanks for everyone that tuned in. Uh, those who uh, were in the chat or just lurking or even watching the VOD. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me just put my pen away. Go to my outro. Wait, let me stop the music. Stop the music. Thanks also for the Digimon, the, the opportunity to have a little Digimon ramble rant. Um, as you can see, I very much like talking about it. So uh, expect that more. I think I am going to be streaming tomorrow, by the way. Same time around 4.30 up to 6.30. Um, I have been playing around with the idea of a traditional art stream where I have like a hand cam and I just draw in my uh, in my bullet journal with Posca markers. We'll see if I end up doing that tomorrow for just another stream like this where I just do studies of styles. But nonetheless, thanks everyone for tuning in. Oh, ending screen, ending screen. <laughs> thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, and yeah, we'll see you when we see you. And uh, yeah, today felt really nice. So thank you, everybody. Have a good one. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.